Good day everyone! This is Sir Jasper and we are now about to discuss another topic. Welcome grade 10 learners! Before we start, here are some of the reminders. First, speak in English. Please be reminded of the English only policy or EOP. Next, listen to the discussion. And last, stay safe everyone. For the most essential learning competency, determine the effect of textual aids like advanced organizers, titles, non-linear illustrations, etc. on the understanding of the text. For the lesson objectives, to use various textual aids in understanding a text, to determine the effect of these textual aids in understanding a text. What can you see in this image? Why these images are used? How are you going to use these images? From the images that I had shown you, what do you think is our lesson for today? Our lesson for today in this week 2 lesson is determining the effect of textual aids on the understanding of a text. Textual aids refer to non-textual elements that help readers understand the context of the text. They also refer to elements that stand out from the main text such as titles and subtitles, bold, italicized, and underlined text. Non-textual elements include illustrations, maps, tables, graphs, and charts. With the use of these textual aids, you, the learners, will understand the content of a particular selection or text through graphic representation. It includes illustrations, maps, tables, graphs, and charts that we will be discussing later on. The two main functions. Number one, to direct the reader's attention to important ideas in the text. And number two, to provide more information as a supplement to what is already written. Number one, titles and subtitles. The description, provide initial idea on what the text is all about. It activates prior knowledge on the topic. It represents the key concepts and supporting ideas in the paper. It's also layering or positioning of these aids convey the idea's level of importance. Here is an example of textual aids. As you can see, we have the title wherein it determines what is the subject, which is all about coronaviruses. We have this second title or the other term for the coronavirus. It is also what we call SARS-CoV-2 virus. Then we have this subtitle, which is all about virus evolution. And with that, there is an article that starts with there is. You can see the full information in this link. The next is the subtitle 2 or the virus seasonality wherein the four coronaviruses adapt to the seasons. Number 2, illustration. Description, it is the visual representation of a subject and it facilitates better retention of the information presented. In this example, we have here mechanical weathering physically breaks up rock. One example is called frost action or frost shattering. Water gets into cracks and joints in bedrock. When the water freezes and it expands and the cracks are opened a little wider. Over time, Pieces of rock can split off a rock face and big boulders are broken into smaller rocks and gravel. In this example, the figures are represented through illustration or the real photo. In this example, we have the mechanical weathering 
wherein the weather forms the rocks and the water is the prime reason why the rock cracks and as it joins in the bedrock it forms another structure such as this two images you can see the figures in this link next is tables for its description information that are organized and arranged in columns and rows used to show patterns and relationships that still appeals to the reader's verbal system meaning tables are supposed to be read like a text we have this column headings and row headings column headings found on the top of the columns used to identify the contents of a specific column for the row headings it is used to define or identify the contents of a specific row it is an example of table wherein we can see percentages of mobile phone owners using various mobile phone features at the left part of the table we can see the features of using a mobile phone it includes make calls take photos send and receive text messages play games search the internet play music and record video that's what we usually do in mobile phones since it is being presented in a column it is what we call column headings at this part we can see the year where in they are using mobile phones the years are 2006 2008 and 2010 and since it is being presented in rows it is what we called row headings then you can see already the percentage here in this part where in the information about the percentage of people using mobile phones are presented through these features graphs here are the descriptions. It is used when a simple table cannot adequately demonstrate important relationships of and within data. We have four parts, but let us discuss the first two. A, bar graph. It uses either vertical or horizontal bars to show the data it represents. But skillsyouneed.com of 2020 emphasized that these bars do not touch each other. Height of the bar indicates the value it represents. The longer the bar, the higher the value it represents. The shorter the bar, the lower the value it represents. At the right side, we have here a bar graph wherein we can see the topic entitled favorite color of students then in one unit there are five students since for example five students here times five since one is to five students it is 25 so five is equivalent to 25 students here therefore in this example we can see the colors in this graph, we can see that blue indicates the highest number. The higher the bar means the larger the amount. For example, the highest amount is 20. So when we convert it into scale, 20 times 5, it is 100 students. That's it. And the lowest amount is yellow wherein you have five students. The number is 25 students. B, line graph. Used to show how numerical data have changed over time and it's best used to show trends. In this example, at the right side, the topic is daily chance of precipitation or amount of rain. We can see that the highest amount is 70%, as we can see here, and the lowest is 12%, wherein the columns suggest 
the season. As we go right, the time also flies. For example, we start at January and we end at December. It means we are collecting the data in the 12 months. See by graphs. It shows how a whole is divided into different parts. For example, in this figure at the right, we can see the payment options. The options are payment card, cash and delivery, and bank transfer. We can see at the pie the percentage of the people using this payment option. 65% for the payment card, 35% for the cash and delivery, and 34% for the bank transfer. And letter D, pictograph. It is similar to bar chart, but use pictures to symbolize the countable unit of items. At the right side, we can see that the R's are represented by clocks. And that is how a pictograph is being described or shown. Maps. These are visual representations of selected characteristics of a place usually drawn on a flat surface. We have two types. A is physical map. It includes labels for features such as mountain ranges and bodies of water. In this example, we can see in the physical map the mountain ranges. For example, this one, the brown one indicates the mountain ranges. Just for example, in this part, the brown part is the Cordillera region, wherein there are many mountains in that area or mountain ranges. And also bodies of water. For example, here, we have here the Sulu Sea in the Mindanao part. That is the physical. Political map usually includes labels for features such as cities and major towns, units such as states or provinces and bodies of water. We have here the map of the Philippines as what is also shown in the upper part, wherein we can see the political divisions, which is represented by the color. For example, Region 2 is being categorized in color blue. Okay? Then the Region 1 is orange. Okay? It is just minimized, but we can see the labels of each particular town or capital cities in a particular area or province. For example, we have here in Palawan. Okay, this is Palawan. And the small one here is the capital city, which is the Puerto Princess. That is the political map. Let's move forward. Are you familiar? With these images? Yes, you're correct. Hyden Diaz recently won gold in the recent Tokyo 2020 Olympics. It's not only that, she's the first Filipina who got a gold medal in the Olympics. There was an article about her last December 6, 2016, by the Department of Education Region 9 Stories. Let's see what's with that article. Heidi Lindias, a victor's crown. Character, indeed, is far more important than reputation. Unwavering commitment and dedication can move towards the path of destiny, which is success. This is precisely the story of a true champion whose standard of excellence is her perseverance and steadfastness in what she does and whose choice may not be easy, but despite of all stumbling blocks along the way, she made herself counted and stood out. Heidi Lynn Diaz, who is fondly called Heidi by family and friends, was not born with a silver spoon in her mouth. She is the fifth child of a family of six by her parents, Eduardo and Emily Diaz, 
On February 2019-1991, she was raised in Mampang, Zamboanga City. And as a child, just like an ordinary one, used to carry containers of waters from the village to their home. That was when she started her weightlifting dream when she was yet 11 years old under the tutelage of her cousin, Alan J. Fruz Diaz, who taught her the basics of weightlifting. She somehow managed to pursue a degree in college at Universidad de Zamboanga, taking up computer science. However, Diaz ultimately decided to stop attending university but later determined to continue with a degree related to sports in Manila. 2008 Summer Olympics Diaz was selected as a wildcard entry to the Summer Olympics by the Philippine Weightlifting Association in early 2008. She is the first female weightlifter to compete for the Philippines in the Olympics and the second weightlifter overall. She placed second to last in a field of 12 weightlifters. Her performance was praised and considered promising for her age. Philippine Sports Commission Chairman William Ramirez once commented that she competed there to gain valuable experience and predicted that she would be a strong contender in future competitions. 2012, Diaz became the first Filipino weightlifter to compete in consecutive Olympics by qualifying in the women's weightlifting under 58 kilogram through the continental and world qualifying tournaments. She was ranked ninth in her event heading to the Olympics. During the 2012 London Olympics, Diaz was chosen to be the flag bearer during the opening ceremony. 2015, trying to improve her chances of landing a podium finish at the 2016 Rio Olympics, Diaz decided to drop weight from under 58 kilograms to under 53 kilograms. This proved to be effective as she recently snatched the gold medal in the first Southeast Asian Weightlifting Championship in Bangkok. She managed to lift a 98 kilogram snatch and a 115 kilogram clean and jerk for a 213 kilogram total. Diaz also earned three bronze medals for the clean, jerk, and snatch events in the 53-kilogram division of the IWF World Weightlifting Championship held in Houston, Texas on November 22, 2015 to claim a spot in the 2016 Rio Olympics. 2016. In the 2016 Summer Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, Diaz competed in the women's 53kg weightlifting category with the intention of at least winning a bronze medal. Diaz surpassed her own personal target and won the silver medal at the event. This was the first medal for the Philippines in the Summer Olympics after 20 years. This was also the first non-boxing medal of coordination since 1936. Aside from being the first Filipino weightlifter to compete in three consecutive Olympics, she also became the first Filipino woman and the first Mindanaoan to win an Olympic medal. On August 8, 2016, she returned to her hometown, Zamboanga City, and was welcomed as a hero of the city. She also received numerous incentives from Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte Philippine Sports Commission, and her local city. Military career. Diaz was recruited into the Philippine Air Force through the Military Arms Direct Enlistment Program in 2013. She was initially assigned to the Air Force Special Service Group. She was also given an Air Force Specialty Code skill in recreation in weightlifting. In 2014, she was given a promotion from the rank of Airwoman to Airwoman Second Class. 
Diaz was also a recipient of a Military Merit Medal for organizing TAF events and a Presidential Citation Unit Badge. When Diaz was training for a stint at the 2016 Summer Olympics, she was assigned to TAF Personal Management Center on a temporary basis. For her achievement at the Olympics, she was given by a promotion by the PAF. The extent of the promotion was initially not disclosed, but it was later reported that Diaz was promoted to the rank of Air Woman First Class. These are the glimpses of the journey of our hero and still counting. The best is yet to come. Mabuhay ka, Heidi Lin. And now, we know the update. Heidi Lin Diaz just recently won a gold medal in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Congratulations! Mabuhay ka! Here are your guide questions. Number one, what made Heidi Lin Diaz the first Filipina to win the gold medal in the Olympics? Number two, why did she win the medal? Number three, as a learner, how will you encourage others to be like Heidelin Diaz in the future? If you really understood our discussion, what did you learn from our lesson today? You can comment down below or share it. Thank you very much for listening. See you again to our next lesson.